As you could see in this animation, the diencephalon is located deep within the brain, on top of the brainstem. Here is a mid-sagittal view showing a close-up of the diencephalon highlighted in red. And from this image, we're going to look at the location of the major structures found within the diencephalon. The largest structure found in the diencephalon is known as the thalamus. And you can see it highlighted in yellow here. I'm going to be listing all the major structures of the diencephalon in this Word document. Please feel free to grab a piece of paper and take some notes along with me. Again, the thalamus is the largest structure found in the diencephalon. The term thalamus actually means bed because it makes up the bed of the diencephalon. The thalamus itself is composed of paired structures attached by a thin band of tissue known as the interthalamic adhesion. It is good to know that the interthalamic adhesion holds the two lobes of the thalamus together because you can actually use this thin band of tissue to help you locate the thalamus. So let's look at this image again. The circle that you see in here is representing the inner thalamic adhesion that would be holding the two lobes of the thalamus together. And you can also see that in the mid-sagittal view of the human brain on the left here. So you can see the inner thalamic adhesion. The thalamus is outlined in red in this image. On the right here, you can actually see the two lobes or sections of the thalamus, and you can see how that band of tissue is holding them together. The space between the two sections of the thalamus is known as the third ventricle. Now let's look at the function of the thalamus. One of the main functions of the thalamus is to relay all conscious sensory information to the primary sensory cortices, except smell. Remember, in order for us to be conscious, or in other words, aware of any of our senses, that nerve signal must reach our cerebral cortex. And again, all conscious sensory information must go through the thalamus before it reaches the cerebral cortex, except smell. And that is why we call the thalamus the gateway to the cortex. For example, in order for nerve signals to travel from the optic nerve in our eye to the occipital lobe where visual processing occurs, that nerve signal must first travel to nuclei within the thalamus, and then the thalamus will direct that signal to the occipital lobe in the back of the brain. The same thing is true for somatosensory senses like touch. Those signals will travel to the thalamus first, and then the thalamus will direct those signals to the somatosensory cortex in our parietal lobe. The second major structure that we're going to look at in the diencephalon is known as the epithalamus. This prefix epi means upon or above. And that is because the epithalamus is located above the thalamus. It is actually a thin structure above the thalamus, and it includes a small pine cone shaped structure called the pineal gland.
let's locate the epithalamus in our mid-sagittal view here. The epithalamus is going to be the structure right here located above the thalamus. And as I stated before, it also includes this pine cone shaped structure called the pineal gland. Now let's look at the three major functions of the epithalamus. The first major function of the epithalamus is helping to regulate emotions. It achieves this because it connects structures of the limbic system the limbic system is known as our emotion and memory centers within our brain and it connects those limbic system structures with other brain regions The second major function of the epithalamus is helping to regulate movement. And that's because it connects structures that are part of the basal ganglia with other brain regions. Remember, the basal ganglia is a collection of structures deep within the cerebrum that help to modify and regulate our movements. Pretty much what the basal ganglion structures are doing is they're preventing unwanted and exaggerated movements. So the epithalamus is helping to connect those structures of the basal ganglia with other brain regions, so helping, therefore, in the regulation of movement. And the third major function of the epithalamus is associated with the pineal gland. The pineal gland is a cute little gland in the back of the epithalamus, and it secretes the hormone melatonin. And you might be familiar with melatonin because melatonin is really important in helping to regulate our sleep cycles as well as our daily rhythms, which we often call our circadian rhythms. The pineal gland starts to increase its production of melatonin once it starts getting dark, and then the levels start to fall again as morning approaches. The next major structure that we're going to look at in the diencephalon is called the hypothalamus. Hypo means lower or below. So I think you can guess where the hypothalamus is located. It's located below the thalamus. I usually can locate the hypothalamus because I look for the W. And I'll show you what I mean by looking at the image over here. So if you're looking over here at this mid-sagittal view, I see this W shaped right here at the lower portion of the diencephalon, and that is where the hypothalamus is located. So notice the hypothalamus, shown in green here, is located below the thalamus. The hypothalamus is attached to the posterior pituitary gland by a stalk called the infundibulum. So if we look at the image here, we could see this stalk here attached to this gland down here. The posterior region of this gland is the posterior pituitary gland. The front part is known as the anterior pituitary gland. You can see the posterior pituitary gland is attached to the hypothalamus via the infundibulum. The infundibulum actually consists of axons, bundles of axons, that connect the hypothalamus directly to the posterior pituitary gland. Now let's list the major functions of the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus does so much in your body, and that is why I like to think of it as a major command center. 
first off, your hypothalamus controls your endocrine system. Your endocrine system consists of a bunch of organs throughout your body that secrete hormones into your blood. And your hypothalamus is what tells your body when to release specific hormones from each of these endocrine glands. Now, not every endocrine gland in your body is controlled by the hypothalamus, but there are many endocrine glands in your body that are controlled either directly or indirectly by hormones released by the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus actually has direct control over hormones released from both the anterior and posterior pituitary gland. The hypothalamus also has control over the autonomic nervous system. Now remember, the autonomic nervous system is the division of our nervous system which moves our viscera or our internal our organs. So for example, our autonomic nervous system controls our heart rate, our breathing rate, our blood pressure, and digestion. The third major function of the hypothalamus is maintaining a steady internal environment in the body, which we call homeostasis. An example of some of the things that are maintained at homeostasis by the hypothalamus includes body temperature, our sleep-wake cycles, and food and water intake. The fourth thing that the hypothalamus does is it causes physiological responses to emotions and memories. This is why we sometimes refer to the hypothalamus as being the output to the limbic system. So the structures that make up the limbic system are really important in assigning emotions to certain events and memories that we have. And so the limbic system may tell us that we're afraid, but is our hypothalamus that actually tells our autonomic nervous system then to speed up our heart rate and for us to actually have the physiological side effects of being afraid. It's the hypothalamus that's sending out that signal then. And then the last uh, major function of the hypothalamus is controlling visceral reactions to smell. This includes things such as gagging, sneezing, and salivating. Now there's one more structure that makes up the diencephalon, and that is the mammillary bodies. The mammillary bodies appear as paired bumps beneath the diencephalon. So if we look at the diencephalon, we can see this bump down here in the mid-sagittal view. That is the mammillary body. If we were to look at an inferior view of the brain, we could see the paired mammillary bodies at the base of the diencephalon. So what do the mammillary bodies do? So let's list their function. Now we know that the mammillary bodies are considered part of the limbic system. Specifically, we know that they have some role in memory formation. And they also have a role in associating smells to our memories.
One interesting thing about smell is that olfaction is clo- closely linked to memories and emotions. And so it is considered part of our limbic system. Let's practice identifying the structures looking at this brain model. So what would A be? A would be the pituitary gland. B is pointing to the hypothalamus. Remember the hypothalamus has this W shape here and the pituitary gland hangs from below the hypothalamus. C is pointing to this thin structure right here. The top of the diencephalon, that is the epithalamus. D is pointing to this large section here. And you can see the interthalamic adhesion right here. So D is pointing to the thalamus, which is right in the middle of the diencephalon. And then E is pointing to this little structure back here in the back of the diencephalon, which would be the pineal gland or pineal gland. I always say pineal or pineal and go back and forth. Uh, F is pointing to this little structure down here, which is the mammillary body. And G is pointing to the stalk, holding the pituitary gland to the hypothalamus, which is known as the infundibulum. Now, usually whenever you perform a dissection in anatomy and physiology, you're not going to be dissecting a human brain. A lot of times it's going to be a sheep brain. So let's locate these structures in the sheep brain here. So A is pointing to this circular structure here, and that is the mammillary body. B is pointing to the large center area of the diencephalon, which is the thalamus. C is pointing to the little pine cone in the back. Well, it actually looks like a big pine cone here. That is the pineal gland. And D is pointing to this region down here, right below the thalamus, which is the hypothalamus. And E is pointing to this thin area above the thalamus, and that would be the epithalamus. Usually whenever you're looking at a sheep brain, you're not going to see the pituitary gland because when you remove the sheep brain, a lot of times the stalk breaks that's holding the pituitary gland to the hypothalamus. So a real quick summary of the diencephalon. Again, it's composed of the thalamus, which makes up the largest region. And the function of the thalamus is to relay all conscious sensory information to the cortex of the brain. Then we also have the epithalamus, which is located above the thalamus. It has three major functions. One is regulating our emotions, helping to regulate movement, and also secreting melatonin because the epithalamus contains a small gland on the back of it known as the pineal gland. The diencephalon also consists of the hypothalamus, which is located below the thalamus, which is attached to the posterior pituitary gland by a stalk called the infundibulum. The hypothalamus is a major command center in the brain. It helps to control the endocrine system. It helps to control the autonomic nervous system. It helps to maintain homeostasis in our body, as well as being the output to our limbic system and controlling visceral reactions to smell, such as gagging, sneezing, and salivating. And then the last major structure that's part of the diencephalon is the mammillary bodies. These are paired bumps that you can see visible if you look at the inferior view of the brain. And the mammillary body has a role in memory formation and associating our smells to our memories. And therefore, it is considered part of our limbic system.